So I guess we'll formally kick off this Fusing Friday. Um, tonight we have a special guest, which is Peggy Jo. She's gonna be talking about some of her artwork and casting and the beautiful things that she's been making um, out of Helios over, over the past few years. And then she's basically, we don't see her in the studio a lot because she lives pretty far away, but uh, she has an amazing studio and she is going to share her art with us tonight. So Peggy Jo, take it away. Okay. So here we go. All right. What am I so first to <laughs> <laughs> So tell us a little bit about these guys. This is a reject. <laughs> <laughs> and I why? find that highly amusing. <laughs> 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 Well, a couple of reasons. Um, the lid, I'm not happy with how pale it is. Um, and the bottom, I cast, I finished casting it the other day and I should have used more clear powder and number one, and I didn't. I threw in a bunch of chunks of Tecto with it. Um, it's not, it's, I don't like matchy matchy, but I do like it to at least kind of coordinate. So the bottom is great by itself and the lid is okay. The lid didn't have enough uh, volume of glass. So on the one picture to the right, to my right, you can see the edge of the lid is a little bit funky, um, but I'm really happy with the shape of the bottom. And that piece weighs about two and a half pounds. Wow, quite so, heavy. So much, so much of your work is about flora and fauna. Um, and um, can, can you talk a little bit about your inspiration? Um, do, you, do you get sent down a path by things you see when you're out walking in your beautiful forest neighborhood? Um, how, how do things come to you and, and what does your environment do for you? It, yeah, actually, it does a lot. Um, this was supposed to look like a agapanthus um, ball. I was someplace not at my house, and I saw an agapanthus, and I said, oh, I could probably make that in glass. And so I lamp worked the um, petals, and then I pre-fused pre them, so they were components, and, um, and then I, this was uh, sculpted in wax. So mm -hmm. I do get a lot of my inspiration from nature. I sometimes get inspiration from, um, things that are happening around me, but um, yeah, I had so I wasn't happy with it. I had completely forgotten that you have lamp working skills as well as fusing skills and stained glass skills. Well, the lamp working is limited. <laughs> I made these, I um, took a, a clear bullseye rod and I would heat the end of it up and then I would roll it in Neo lavender, I don't know, I don't have my notes here. Neo lavender, erbium pink, and something else. There was another purple, maybe a gold purple, some of them. And then the center um, of those flowers, I rolled those in pieces of dichro, which they don't have <clears throat> much sparkle. I was hoping it would have a little bit more sparkle. And I was kind of messing with, um, what is it, modeling glass? Mm -hmm. to hold the pieces together and I fired it and I I ne have never taken a, a class I just sort of YouTubed it and I wasn't happy with the outcome with, of it but that doesn't mean that I don't like you know I just don't know how to use it um, I've never even thought of modeling glass being used almost like a glass adhesive that way it's so smart oh well I don't know it didn't turn out <laughs> <laughs> I think it's beautiful. <laughs> so are you saying you use the modeling glass to attach the little rods to the cap, so to speak? Well, I um I attach the pet the flower petals and and the center to wax. And then I will put the I put that in plaster. So I had a big long thing of uh. these little uh, things popping up and then I filled that with modeling glass 
And for some reason, I thought it would turn out clear, and it turned out white and very porous. Interesting. I, mm. So I went ahead, and then I took those pieces, and I um, put them in the wax, into the wax shape for the lid. Mm -hmm. cool. And then I steamed the wax out. Yeah. Once, you know, once I cast with the modeling glass, then I cast again um, with the wax, and I steamed the wax out. But, you know, I like them. They're okay separate. Um, maybe I could turn a little flower thing. I can fill in the bottom where it slides down over the top of the box and make it a paperweight or something. But um, as it sits now, no, I don't like it. <laughs> it's a promising direction, at least. It's just beautiful. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, thank you. I love it. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, that was again. Okay. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I call this one uh, Moonbeam, a hybrid T for two. And it was a an iron fuser piece. Um, and it was, we were required to use a certain type of glass, which was the blue, and it's also glow in the dark. So it does glow in the dark. And we have a picture and of again, that as well. Go ahead. Um, and the little worms are um, lamp work. And then Matt and I went out and found a piece of a flat cedar branch that we liked and um, cut it up and he finished it. So Peggy Gilmore, okay. are all those so, panels, are they um, cast or are they just a slump? What, how'd, how'd you get those shapes? I uh, made a stencil. No, wait, how'd I do those? I <laughs> lied. I, um, I, I pressed the glass first and I got it to the thickness that I thought I wanted it. And then I made, I uh, sculpted molds and set the glass on the molds and put a little piece. The, the petals were all, um, separated pieces and then I put a piece of the blue glass in the center with the mold and then once they came out of the mold I um I fit them together and cold fused them was was the mold and I did the same what was the mold Sorry? um a uh, fiber blanket was it um no it was um it was clay I sculpted it out of clay okay so sculpted that and then did a light fire and then it has to sit for 10 yeah yeah when you sculpt with clay it has to sit till it's dry and then you can put it in the kiln and fire it so it's a good thing that there was like what they say three weeks to a month yeah yeah and um and so once the clay was dry i fired it in the kiln then kiln washed it and i could set the petals on it cool. and i might also Oh, go ahead. The leaves were oh, also um, a press. Very cool. Press glass. Okay. I was going to just, uh, I noticed there were a lot of uh, folks that had joined us who are not from Austin. So I just wanted to give a, a brief, I guess, intro to the Helios Iron Fuser event, which it's, it's kind of like Iron Chef where they give them certain ingredients and then you have to come up with something from those ingredients. And so this was something that would happen once a year at Helios where they give you a kit of different materials that you, you had to put together and you had to show those items as prominently as you could in your composition. So, so that's when we are saying the things that, that uh, were in the kit. Um, one was glow in the dark for it and you'll see that here in just a second. So. It was one of my favorite iron fusers. <laughs> Peggy Joe's always you. had some stunning ones. So there it is, uh, glow in the dark. With the glow in the dark frit. It still glows in the dark. Does it really? Yeah, there's so, a little bit of light. It's sitting. 
So, Peggy Jo, how did you make the petals initially? Uh, did you use the frit and some blue glass? Did you crush that and put them together to fuse? Or what was the initial process? I, I did. Um, I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but you set up, a, you know, you cut the strips of glass and then you set it up over the top of mandrels and you fire it uh, and it makes yeah. a puddle yeah on the yeah. floor and mm -hmm. then i took that puddle and i pressed it and Got then it. i cut it out with a ring saw uh -huh. um the petals with a ring saw yeah and then um sandblasted them and mm -hmm. um put them on the molds got that got that beautiful how are you i haven't seen you in a long time i know i know i'm pretty good how i'm glad to hear uh, to hear you today yeah it's fun to be have, here we, we have a question yeah. online whether or not you've ever considered freeze infused for things like the worm i don't even know what freeze infuse is all right so we'll <laughs> go on that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. All right. Uh, this is a, heart, a heartbreaking piece. Oh. This, <laughs> sorry if I get emotional because we just evacuated last week. Um, <clears throat> so we had a major fire here in Bastrop in 2011. And um, where this tree is, the house was getting excuse me, getting ready to burn, and I couldn't stop to help them because I had to get to my in-laws, which was two properties away. So after everything, the dust settled kind of a deal. This was this piece was um, sculpted for Art for the Ashes, uh, Art from the Ashes. It's a California nonprofit who came into the area, um, and all of the art that was sold the money went to plant trees on private property for free. Mm -hmm. So this is, this tree was, I asked Mike if I could take a cast of the tree and he told me, yes, I could. So I actually made two of these, three of these, and, <laughs> but they weren't as large as this one. So this was the tree that I selected and um, you can see the road in the background of the picture. And then that's the model once I pulled it off the tree. Hmm. Is that wax, Peggy Jo? No, it's silicone. Silicone, gotcha. Do you want the mm -hmm. next slide? Yep. Okay, there we go. So this is the this is the model in wax on the left, and then that's the mold for it. Mm. Um, on the left is that piece of glass. It was 14 pounds of glass and the mold was 90, 90 pounds going into the count. And then the cardboard mock-up because we weren't quite sure how steep we wanted the bend to be. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, that piece in the kiln was uh, five or six days, and it was another five or six days to do the slump. Wow. So wow. On, the, on the left is Matt holding it. <clears throat> the piece of timber that it's on, there was a church who was milling wood and um, giving the wood away for free for people to build sheds because there was not enough building material after the fire. Um, and so uh, that's where I acquired, that's an actual tree that burned. Wow. My God. That they milled. Mm. It's absolutely stunning. The picture. Thank you, Joe. It's, yeah. Thank it's you. Beautiful. The photo on the right was taken by Karen. The interesting part is the man who um, purchased this, the uh, exhibit was open for 45 minutes and it sold. Uh, but the man who wow. purchased it had donated trees from his burnt property to the same church where I got that wood. Mm. Mm. What a beautiful story. Yeah. Very cool. 
That is beautiful. May, may I and I really you, didn't. Sorry. Yes. May I ask you what colors of glass did you use? I in that I used um, medium, medium and light amber. That's what. And I it was sheet glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. This is likely to be an intense, dangerous storm with heavy snow, high winds, and whiteout conditions. So I wish so I would have was, had the scale touch. Was, was this an open face casting or? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick, a quick break real quick. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to mute everybody. If you have a question, feel free to unmute. Um, but I'm just going to mute everybody because there's some TV that's, I can hear the TV going in the background. Okay, so um, Peggy Joe, you might have to unmute here in a second. Okay. Peggy Joe? I think there's yes. Some. There she goes. Okay, cool. Hello? So yeah, because I Is there's that some I TV. Press star on. Six, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Sorry. Oh, no. Sorry, Gat? we never used it with the phone. Kat, yeah. um in the uh presentation, will you slide number 13 up to right under eleven and, and just slide that up one because I put it in the wrong place this morning? Absolutely. Yeah. There Thank we you. go. Okay. And like I said, anybody, if you, oops, I gotta get out of there, hide this. If anybody has any um, comments or questions, please feel free to unmute. It's just to, to tone out the TV, so, all right. So um, my question was, is this um, an open face casting, Peggy Jo? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. yes it is. Mm -hmm. So in the back, I mean, I mean, it was flat, and then you molded it. Yeah, never mind. I got it now. <laughs> yeah, it's fourteen pounds of glass. Wow, wow that's amazing. I like too how you can. It's almost no, like it has. And the piece, Yeah, like there's heat, right? Um, yeah. And the the piece with the base stands thirty inches. Okay. That is beautiful. So it was quite it large. Up. Yeah. I wish I would have had the skill set to make pine cones. Mm. <laughs> I bet you could if you if you would put your mind to it. Yeah. Well, I can make pecans. That's what this is. This piece is called the graft. Um, my daughter has a son who was uh, chronically ill, and there was a man that had a house for sale, and he only wanted it to go to a family. Uh, this is one of the pecan trees in the back of the house. Um, and this is the graft and it was right outside the kitchen window. He said he remembered his mom talking about how much the tree has grown by how high the graft had become. So, um, it's a great graft of a pecan tree and then a, a pecan that I picked up off the, out of, off the ground in the backyard mm -hmm. from the same tree. So when we closed on the house, um, I gave that to them. Mm -hmm. Very nice. The colors are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> <laughs> I made this piece twice. Why? Because um, I couldn't get it out of the mold. The mold didn't set up. Oh, no. So, oh, no. Um, yeah, <laughs> I made it twice. Um, again, this is a fusing, not fusing, iron fuser piece. The required glass was the orange and opaline, I think. Um, so I cut the orange up and I did the same thing with making a puddle with it. And then um, I cut that into strips so that I could lamp work the petals. Mm -hmm. mm. How about the leaves? Because they are so the, thin. They're real leaves. I cast them. Uh, yeah. And then uh -huh. I picked them out of the bottom of the mold and mm -hmm. um, filled it with glass. So mm -hmm. these, the, the flowers again were components. 
Mm -hmm. Lamp work? They were lamp work? Yes. Mm -hmm. The centers and the flowers were lamp work. Again, I don't have great lamp working skills, but <laughs> fake it until you make it, right? Right. Yeah. This is this piece isn't I should have um anyway, this one's not finished. The photo of it isn't finished. This is a class that I took from Paul and I don't know what it's called. Um with with uh fiber paper. This was the frit freeze and fiber. Okay. And I made the oranges. <clears throat> And those are components that I set into it, the oranges, the butterfly, and the the leaves on the surface. Um, and then I added the <clears throat> vitrograph and the leaves in the background. It's called Summertime Snack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, grand, my grandson has deleted lots of pictures from lots of places, so I was <laughs> struggling to find photos. <laughs> Is this one in progress, Peggy Jo? It, we actually, um, it's finished, but um, you know, I wasn't happy with it. I put the copper wire on, you know, in the head and for his legs and stuff, and they oxidized, and the head didn't. It it's a reject. Um, the head didn't go all the way down to the oranges, and so and this was as I was cleaning it up. Really nice design. Thank you. Happy colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is also a class from Paul. Um, totem poles, totem. I think mm -hmm. is what he calls it. No, it's mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and isn't this where we discovered right. that the pinks need a lot, that 1225 hold because these things weren't um maturing you weren't getting the pink color the first time you tried them yes absolutely i forgot about that yep you're absolutely right yep i remember that yeah a lot of dots i love dots mm -hmm. i do too <laughs> and this oh is that same piece after the rain finished mm -hmm. Is beautiful. I remember it. Thank you. Hmm. Is that the base, Peggy Jo, the wood? Yes, the base is a dead pine tree. Yes. Oh. And it sits up kind of on a pedestal, um, and we put lights underneath to make it a light. Nice. Don't uh -oh. whine. Sorry, you were what? talking about people in their TV. I was talking to our dog. Oh, <laughs> it seems a little bit level, lower resolution on this one, but hmm. just gorgeous. Yeah. So you can see the the leaves that I had picked up. This is a piece that I made. I just picked those off the ground, and then I, you know, filled the backs of them with clay. Gotcha. Wow. So as I pulled the clay out, I pulled the leaves out too. This was a gift that I made for Karen for her birthday. I don't Aww. remember what birthday it was. Hmm. I remem remember seeing it at Helios for a while. I remember it too. It's I a like happy that. Yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. I like the worm working its way through the wood. That's really good. <laughs> <funny. laughs> Those petals are so yummy. They're beautiful. That's a good word to describe it. I Again, this was with, um, with the, you know, make the puddle, press the glass. The glass on this rose is much thinner than the blue rose, and I use the same uh, depths as with the blue rose. So Peggy Jones did... on this. I'm I'm sorry. Did, does each petal have its own mold? Um, the, the mold is, the top layer of that is four petals. So the mold is, um, 
those exact shapes, but with a little bit of um, shaping to them. And it's all one piece. I made it all oh. one piece, the mold. That way I could add glass to the center of the petals. Got it. So they would all fuse together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Ready for this one? Oh, I this, have one more was, question. Sorry. Oh, for, okay. Uh, how big of a puddle do you usually make? I, I'm just wondering how much how big of a piece can you uh, press? Because I know, if I remember, Kim was saying that she broke a few um, shelves because, do you remember, Kim? Because yes. the pressing yes. uh, glass, uh, the pieces were too big, you thought, or they were not uneven uh, or something like that. Or yes, my I broke a shell. Oh, I'm so glad <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> And so now when I press glass, I put it on either side of the break and still mm. use it. Got it. But uh, how big of the of the of a puddle was this one, do you think? Um before you started pressing it. Oh, the puddle? Mm -hmm. Maybe. 12 inches, 10 inches around, you know, they're, they're oh. not, they're not, you know, even they, yeah. they come, they flow weird, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I would maybe 10 or 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And then I, I cut them in half and then I put them on each side of the break. Uh -huh. And then I, yeah. you know, weigh them down to press it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Ready? Mm -hmm. This was a second piece that um, I cast after moving here. It's called Ladybug Bridge, and it was a donation for a charity. Hmm. Different view. Very nice. I like the colors. Thank you. That is nice. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Components. I I go to the studio and I make these things. And um, do I keep notes? No. <laughs> <laughs> and this is part of my... This is part of my front door. Uh, the door is called Heritage. It has a, Matt's from Texas, so he has a Texas star in the background and my family is from Kansas, so it has a sunflower going up through the center of it. Um, and at the bottom of it, there is um, vitrograph and other kinds of long leaves that I made. These components, I made a bunch of bugs and dragonflies and lizards and stuff to go on it and it's dimensional on both sides and also there's a houston toad in the bottom bottom of it so the head is on the front side of the glass and his little butts on the back side of the glass we have a picture of that coming up and these are lamp work lamp work part lamp work and um part um round discs that I uh, cut with the tile saw or the, mm -hmm. the ring saw. Mm -hmm. So the, the red ones, the red dangly ones, those all move. Uh, that's lamp worked. That's what they thought. And mm -hmm. yeah. And the back parts of the yellow ones, those are lamp worked. Mm -hmm. the, the blue bonnets are, there's three blue bonnets on the door and that's for our grandsons. Um, and they're all Texans. So that was um, the little dots. And the orange ones with the yellow dots in the center, those are California poppies for myself and our girls. <laughs> nice. And then I, the, those leaves are flat. They're dimensional on them. Okay, so I put this pick, I took, whoops. 
should have put the picture in there. The, these are going to be zinnias. So those are um, basically little powder wafers. Oh, wow. That I had to clean up. And then the zinnia leaves are off to the side. I have an oak tree. I took a photo of it, and it has a red zinnia in the front of it with the bright green leaves and the texture and the dull gray of the uh, post oak in the background. So I have to make a model of the tree and see where that goes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here's rejects. I've got lots of them. <laughs> Do not ask me why I would put an upright tree in the kiln, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you never shy away from the challenge. <laughs> it's very abstract. <laughs> yeah, and flat. Not quite, but it's interesting. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, there's a picture of a flat piece of wood with a hole in the center of it. And these are components for that called Growing Wild. And um, I used to have a, a BLM Wild Mustang that I adopted and um, and so these are Mustang grapes. I just thought it was kind of weird, you know. But once I got the um, wax cast, it's two-sided texture, so it's a two-piece, a two-piece press mold. Um, it it reminded me of a, a cemetery stone, so I cut it up, and this is all that's left. But so I'll have to figure something else out. Wait, those grapes are cast? I uh, know they're lamp works. You're trying to tell me you don't have any skill. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're round. It's, it's not hard to make round. Um, the leaves oh, are powder wafer. They're it's round, but, <laughs> but they actually look like grapes. Right. The shading is, is right. It's just I know. I know. Yeah. It, well, it, you know, I have a whole bunch of them that um, probably didn't work out. And so, but these, I don't even know what glass I used. I mean, I know I use powders and I use number one fret, um, but I don't know the color. Wow. They're just beautiful. Because. And your lamp working well, bullseye, you. right? Is yes. Peggy Joe, mm -hmm. your lamp. Okay, cool. Wow. Just amazing. Mm -hmm. And wow. some more components. Mm -hmm. It looks like a salad. <laughs> I see some carrots in there and <laughs> forbidden salad. <laughs> this is a piece that I made. I had taken a class uh, from Judith Conway. And um, and so I made this. I love how you see through all the layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How thick is this piece, Peggy Jo? Is it standard six mil? Um, probably six mil um, maybe five layers of glass. Wow. There's yeah. It's quite mm -hmm. heavy, or it was. I don't remember what happened to it. I probably gave it away. <laughs> mm. Mm. And these are my little funky rejects. Um, I actually have finished two of them. I have people who ask me for things. And uh, so my new thing now is refrigerator art. So these are refrigerator magnets. <laughs> Hmm. And you can see the one in the upper in right. Yeah, yeah, I put some dichro in there. I tried to, you know, I tried to make it minimum, but it's hard to um, take those little pieces and get the dichro where you need it to be. Um, mm -hmm. And the one in the upper right, I put the sky on the left. 
instead of above the flower. Oh, so again, I thought that was another reject. Oh, of course, it was. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Right, but Karen always used so to say, I, I meant to do that. I meant to do that. Yeah, I, yep, that's true, she did. And so I have finished two of them. Um, I don't have the little magnets on them uh, yet, but um, they'll be gifts to people who want little pieces of my work. Hmm. Oh. This is my first, I took my, okay, I have to tell you this story. My girlfriend moved to Mainer and... Um, so she calls me up and she says, there's a glass studio in Austin that's just opened. So I went to their website and I saw Ellen Abbott's work. And I said, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. How does she do this? So um, I took her class. It was in 2007 when I started doing Pat de Verre, And this is my first piece mm. from her class. So where was she teaching you at? Helios. She was teaching at Helios. Oh, at Helios. Oh, at mm -hmm. Helios. Okay. Yep. At the, the old shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Well, this is, okay, there's another bowl in there that's a reject. And so these are the pieces that came from it. It's just a little oak leaf bowl. I was trying to get it to where it was dimensional on both sides. Um, I have, uh, it'll be propped, the, the bigger one would, was going to be propped up with a uh, glass oak leaf, I mean, glass oak limb, and then the acorns were going to be flowing out of it, and it was going to be called um, Next Generation. Mm -hmm. But it didn't turn out. Did it turn out? <laughs> okay so my husband plays golf and um so i wanted to make him the 19th hole <laughs> <laughs> and you can see it's a reject because the green pulled up into the into the clear i should well the first the one in the back is clear the one in the front is white and it still wasn't strong enough to keep the glass back so um, he wants me to make him another one with a separate ball and a golf tee that comes off. So I don't know how that's going to work with cats, but we'll see. I would like to say that Matt is a very fine glass artist himself. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Wait, he wants when you he to make wants another one? Right. When he yeah. wants to. Oh, yeah. These, these are um, total rejects. They don't, the, the cup part touches, not enough glass, basically. The cup part touches the ground and they kind of tilt back and forth, mm. teeter totter mm. back and forth. So um, I use it for my cup in the studio. <laughs> Great fun, mm. fun idea. Yeah. Oh. oh, I remember this one too. Oh God. So this, this is this is this the one where I say, family gathering. This is the one where I say I'm sorry. You you Peggy Joe, this is this was the year that you and I were in the running for Iron Fuser, and I once again got runner up to you. <laughs> this was the lava glass year. <laughs> oh, that is that's right. That was lava glass. Was well, I again I pressed the glass, but I made sure that I fired it hot and long so that the glass was very, very thin. And I cast um, butterfly bodies and um, the leaves and I, the bottom of it is glass. The only thing that's not glass that I couldn't get to work at that time was the branch. Um, and the three leaves represent, uh, this is called family gathering and they're gathering for the baby. Um, and the leaves represent the one on the ground is a family's past, the one in the middle is the present, and the one towards the top is a family's future. Mm. Just beautiful. I love this piece. Uh, yeah. Right? Mm. Just so many things going on in your pieces. It's just, there's a story for everyone. 
<laughs> and I think that that's what motivates me. Like, you yeah. know, there has to be something that kind of pushes me to, cause I haven't done, I haven't cast in years, but um, I started getting back into it. I started getting back into it when Kim had her uh, quarantine art page during uh, the shutdown at COVID. And I sculpted, I sculpted this little box and our neighbor was young at the time. She was 17. She goes, that is the creepiest COVID box I have ever seen. And I started laughing. So I finally got it. Um, I have the molds made. I just have to get the glass in it. Mm. So, and these were the leaves for um, family gathering. Oh. Wow. Is that a single use mold that, that you created? Yes. Um, yeah. All of they all of them are. Gotcha. What temperature are you firing your clay um, before you uh, cast in it? Um I I oh man, you would ask me that. Um no, I sorry. think no worries. <laughs> It, no, no, it, it's just been years. Um, I think it, my kiln only goes to 1600. Oh, okay. I think you're supposed to take it up to 1800. Mm. Um, I haven't had any problem with the integrity of the molds that I sculpt. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to say 1600 and I'd have to look it up for the time, for the, the yeah, length yeah. of time. Think, yeah. So they still hold well. Okay. Yes, I still have them. Mm -hmm. And you can reuse them, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And you use armadillo clay? Armadillo, yes. I use uh, longhorn white with no grog. Yeah. A nice smooth clay that's, that's uh, yeah. available in all Slimy, slimy. <laughs> Very cool. Oh. And here's a reject. <laughs> what? I was, I was. <laughs> you cracked me. You, have another re you said, Kim said, make sure you put the rejects in. So I did. <laughs> I, this is not a reject. <laughs> I would love to do one of your rejects. I would love to be able to do that like that. Mm. Well, it was. Um, it didn't turn out, but I really like the color. I don't like the pixelation along the edge of the leaf, but I really liked the color and how it glowed. Was it chartreuse? I have no idea. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> I, no, no, I don't. I really, I really don't. I just, you know, it was like a little, again, it's very important to keep notes and I need to start practicing doing that. I've made several things. There was, I made one leaf and I had put uh, number one clear on the top of it so that when after I fired it, it kept that number one texture. A, I don't know how long I fired it or at what temperature, and I have no idea how I made it. But it's, I still have the leaf. It's like my favorite leaf. Um, and one of these days, I'll figure it out. We will anxiously await. Yeah. Um. And I'll have my notebook with me. I can tell you everything about it. So mm. these are the, see, I had some disability. I had some uh, butterflies that were disabled. They didn't have little butts on them. Some only had two leaves, some had uh, four, I mean, two wings and some had four wings. I had to drill all the little holes to stick the antennae in and pull those with the torch. Wow. So. Oh my gosh. Is this I like wax right yeah. here, Peggy Jo? No, that's black, that's, that's cast. Wow. Mm-hmm. Each butterfly was cast in its own mold. I wanted them wow. to be like a family, you know. They look similar, sort of, but they're all different. Right. I like the one with no butt. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. 
Yeah, I told you there's some disabled ones on there. <laughs> <laughs> is that because you didn't have enough uh, uh I, I want to say petal leaves uh, wings. <laughs> there was not enough glass no mm -hmm. wow were the, also were the wings cast together with the body when you cast them no no oh, i okay. i glued them on there that i had made um i had all the wings and then I, um, how did I do that? I, uh, I made the bodies out of wax and then I took the wings and I stuck them in the bodies and then I pulled them out. I should have did it all at once. I don't know why I didn't. I could have easily done that. <laughs> but um, anyhow, that's what I did. And then when they came out, I had to dig the plaster out of them and clean them up and then shape the, the wings to go into the each body. Wow. And then so drill their heads. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Now that I said that, I could do it all as one piece. Yeah. Mm. It seems like divesting them would be very difficult though with the- Well, I did that agapanthus technology. and you know what? The, the first piece, the reject with the agapanthus, mm -hmm. I was so surprised and lucky that I didn't break one petal on that thing. Wow. As I took it out of the mold. Mm. Laura's is saying that um, you might be able to use bead release to do the holes for the antenna. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, mm. you know, it's your skill set. <laughs> Mm. Love, love, love. Oh, see, there they are. They have antennas and they're sitting in sand to hold them up. And then that's the caterpillar that I sculpted mm. for it. Mm. I loved his little feet. I was so proud of those. <laughs> and you so did I mold that. It's not from a real caterpillar, I'm guessing. No, I sculpted it. Okay. These no caterpillars, caterpillars were harmed. <laughs> no lost yeah, caterpillars. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, it's just adorable. Aww. Mm. And this is as I was assembling it. There's the base for it out of clay. You can see that on this one, I had little pieces of glass coming out of it, but that yeah. didn't work out. Mm. I decided I didn't want glass. Isn't that what they say? Right. You meant to do that? Mm. You meant to do that. Mm. Wow. Is this piece with you now, Peggy, or did you, did you give it to someone? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it, I still have it in the studio. Mm -hmm. Except the caterpillars on the mantle in my um, house. Uh -huh. you, you had another piece with butterflies, didn't you? Uh, they were orange, orange or am I remembering it uh -huh. wrong? Yep. You did, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I did get the stick made out of glass with that one. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Because <laughs> you are very proud of this peak, I remember that, that. I was so proud of that one. Yep. Hey, Peggy, what did but you make the, the chrysalis out of? I um, sculpted that out of wax. My goal was to have dichro in the center of it so that it would look like life. Mm. You know, when the light hit it. Um, and I put the dichro in the center of it, but it, <clears throat> it just didn't turn out. So I sculpted it with wax. And um, I, how did I do that? I um, set it on end and the end where it's being suspended from was thicker. Um, and I took a toothpick or, you know, something small, like a mandrel. I have little tiny mandrels, kind of tuck the glass down in there. Um, and then I shaped it so that it was thinner once it came out of the mold. Mm -hmm. Do you remember so it didn't turn out. 
what color is the chrysalis is um, yeah. crystal clear powder. That's powder. But the dichro, for some reason, didn't um, show up. Okay. But it's in there. Thank you. What a cool idea. Yeah. All right. Mm. Mm. So who's Here's doing some the door? Work? I'm sorry? Who's doing the metal work? The metal the work? Glass. The stained yeah. glass? Uh-huh. I do. Oh, you do the stained glass too. Wow. Mm -hmm. The um the center one is called Celebration. Um, and that was the first piece that I had actually made uh, molds and that is slumped stained glass because I knew nothing about um, fused glass. So the picture on the left shows you the dimension um, and that's our bedroom yes, door. Ah, okay. I see these were obscuring. Yeah. And I used Kaiser Lee board for the molds because I didn't know about anything else. Mm. So the bubbles, you know, they're, they um, are convex on the outside, concave, I don't know. They, they pop out on the outside and the inside of the door it, of that panel is hollow, you know, there. Wow. And I used um, Spectrum Clear Baroque. You can kind of see it on the picture in the left so that it looked like air movement. Oh, yeah. I so see the it. glass. Yeah, so yeah. the glass was, um, when you see it in person, the glass looks like it's flowing uh, along with the shape of the ribbons. Mm. Mm. I see this one over here. I'm gonna move these over real quick. And- I love how you think out every single detail. Yeah. When I just saw the star on this one, that's why I was blowing this up. Right. Yeah, that's show. heritage. So the, that's the inside of the door. Um, mm -hmm. When I fused it, I had to fuse it backwards. So this, this side actually met, matches the other side, but it's flat. Like all the leaves are flat, the sunflower is flat, but it's got dimensional pieces um, with the vine going up it. And the butterfly is three dimensional. There's two of them, one on each side. And it's mm. covered with uh, tempered, quarter inch tempered glass so that it's actually three layers and insulated. That's our front door. I was gonna blow this up. And it show. weighs about a hundred, weighs about 150 pounds. And you can see that the, the um, adhesive that I used, which was a UV glue, didn't hold because all the little flowers are now falling off of it. Oh, and no. the only way that we could, yeah, the only way that we can fix it now is to um, take it apart and wreck it. So mm. I guess the garden's dying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but when you open the door, the little red um, flowers move. Oh, because there's an air gap between them. Oh, and you said those are the lamp work pieces, right? The little red yep. flowers were lamp worked. Yep. I strung them on a piece of copper. Mm. And so the vine is made out of copper and then I um, tend it. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you. So that was my very first piece of glass that I made in 1983. What? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Thank you. I still have them. Mm. <laughs> and the chicken, I, I made the chicken. We had a laundry room that faced the neighbor's front porch. So um, that's my first dimensional piece. And I made that in 1986. Wow. 
<laughs> and we shipped all this. We brought all of this from California. The oh doors, God. everything. Oh yeah, in fact, I still have one door still out in the shed. Wow. I don't remember what I called it, this, but the front of it is spring. And um, mm -hmm. there's about 150 leaves on the front. And I had one of those little tiny kilns that had a four by four shelf in it. <laughs> um, and that's what <laughs> that's what I used to um, slump the leaves, and um, I attached them with uh, copper foil and a and a wire. Actually, went all the way around them, and when it got to the bottom part of the leaf, I twisted the wire and made an eye hook, and that's what I attached it to the tree with. Mm. So this side is spring, and then the back side of it is fall. Is that to the door to your studio? I see art stuff back there. Oh no, that's my sewing room. Ah. My, I, oh. I, my creative spaces are yellow. I like yellow. We've noticed that. It's beautiful and happy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Wow. This is heritage when we were building it and you can see the dimension. Mm. Um, the leaf at the bottom with the holes in the center of it, that was a reject, but I said, I'm going to use it anyway. So I put the little worm on there. So it looked like he was eating the leaf. <laughs> and there's a, there's, I cast a, I didn't cast a real lizard. I cast a toy lizard. And um, so there's a lizard on there, dragonflies, ladybugs. You can see the, the four um, blue bonnets in the corner for the three boys and Matt and all the vitrographs. Wow. And, when and you can you see that the, the, I'm sorry. When did you do this one? How long ago? I did this in 2017, mm. 16, maybe 16. Yeah. Matt was really excited about that one. Not. <laughs> I get the look, you know, when I said, I want to do this. And he just sort of looks over his glasses at me like, seriously? <laughs> Gotcha. So on the door, as we're looking at it right now, that's the back side, the flat side of it. Um, the one on the right is the flat side of it. Okay. The one on the front. So when I fuse the petals and the center, I, mm -hmm. um, I had to reverse everything, but the, I put little pieces of um, vitrograph, orange vitrograph, just to give the petals a little bit of dimension and to show movement. And I did the same thing on the backside pieces. So it's not like I applied, um, like the backside's totally flat. It has the texture of the seeds. I think that was number three frit. Mm -hmm. And um, just like the front. Wow. Mm -hmm. but, but the leaves on the back, you can see, are flat, and on the front, they're um, shaped. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It took me about two years to get that done because I was a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I well, don't think start, I would call you, you start, a coward you know, after I see this. <laughs> you well, no, because you would, I would be frozen in fear that I was going to screw this up. It laid on the bench for two years, the stained glass part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, I don't know, somebody was coming over and I, oh, my friend Shirley was coming for a visit and I promised her I'd have the door done, that there's my motivation. So I got it, fin we, we got it finished. And then Matt had to have a friend come over and help him move it from the studio to the house. That's how much mm -hmm. it weighs. Wow. Peggy Joe, did you guys build the door also, or was it? Yes. It was a, it was a um, solid core door, and mm -hmm. Matt drilled out the handles and the hinges 
um, and then he cut out the hole for the window and then built the frame around it. So it's three layers of glass. That's what makes it so heavy because there's an air gap mm -hmm. of, I think, an inch and a half between the glass and the outside um, tempered cover on mm -hmm. both sides. Because our kids, our grandkids were small and I didn't want them touching the lead. So, oh, yeah. but I wanted them to be able to enjoy the window. That's this beautiful. piece we brought from California. The panel is probably three by five ish. And um, I had it in my garden in my front yard in California and it's dimensional. Mm. The ribbon is dimensional. Mm. So at certain times of, of the day, Go ahead. I, I, at certain times of the day, the afternoon light hits it and it just explodes with color. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you. It has a lot of movement. Right. Well, that's, you know, ribbon? it's, um, the ribbon is like the life cycle of the garden and mm -hmm. the, the amber orbs are the California poppies and, um, and there's just chaos in the garden constantly, right? There's snakes and bugs and kids and cats, lots mm -hmm. of stuff. We live, we live next to a very busy freeway and um, the sound wall was like, two lanes away from the side of our house mm. that we um, used to live in. So I just got into the scrap box and went for it. <laughs> that is beautiful. Thank you. The, there is a piece of zinc bisecting it. You can see that dark serpentine line. Mm. That's a piece of zinc. So this is some more, whoops. To give it support because it's so big. I see it. It's running kind of around the middle vertically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. I had a set of bifold doors on the patio and all that good stuff. So mm -hmm. this is just a kind of a close up shot of heritage. Mm. I just love there's so many different techniques in it. It's I think the worm is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it. real, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's adorable. Wow. And again, I sculpted the molds for the sunflower and for the leaves. There it is. It's in the garden. And then you can see the sound wall in the back. So oh, these yeah. sunflowers were were mammoth sunflowers and I'm driving up the road and I see them moving back and forth and back and forth, one of them. And there was a squirrel hanging on it. <laughs> he was after the sunflower and he was Aww. swinging away. And that was, I was gonna try to enter the Half Moon Bay pumpkin contest. And I, that pumpkin got to maybe like 140 pounds. So no. we took it to a girlfriend's house and dropped it off in her front yard. No. Uh -huh. hmm. That's um. So here's another reject. But I um we have nesting bluebirds here and the boxes they'll take the pine needles and they will you know put them around the box so when you remove the nest they're actually square and I actually did make one square I don't know where it's at it was really fragile though um, and then the little eggs are those cast yes okay. mm -hmm. great color Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jim's favorite color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a reject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this is a piece that Matt made, and it's the same um, concept as the 
summertime snack with a layered fiber paper. And mm. our daughter had a um, coffee shop called Chupacabra Java. And his goal was to make sure that those big fang teeth, that was the logo, the big fang teeth did not touch the glass. And he did it. It's amazing. Wow. It was a beautiful piece. So we framed it and gave it to her. And it hung in her shop. It's now in her kitchen. Mm. But he's really meticulous. He made a rainbow trout for a friend of ours. I cast the rock, but that's all I did. And, um, and it's beautiful, too. But, again, I have no photos. No, I really miss great. seeing you guys at the studio. Yes. I'm sorry? I really miss seeing you guys at the studio. Oh, so do we. But um, until the COVID numbers, we feel yeah. more comfortable with that. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. It can't so last. All forever. the teeth. No, I hope not. Even the little fangy teeth in the front are, it's open underneath them. It's insane. He's, yeah, he's really meticulous about his work. Unlike <laughs> me, he has accurate notes. <laughs> so. <laughs> You guys are both fearless. Mm -hmm. You think? I, sometimes I just think we're kind of stupid. You know, you just <laughs> put it in there and hope for the best. He, he's not that way I am. You know, kind of like putting an upright tree in the kiln. Of course it's going to stand. <laughs> Is this a thick piece, Peggy Jo? Yes, it is a thick piece. Um, hang on for a moment. Matt? Matt, how thick is the Chupacabra Java piece? Close to an inch, he said. Oh, wow. The background part, yeah. Right. And he, when there's light coming through it, it shows more movement. Mm. But I didn't think he was going to get the name on it, but he did. It works. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, there it is oh. with the light coming through it. He built a frame for it and a heavy frame. Mm. Wow. Oh this piece goodness. is this piece is called Vintage Shoe. My brother's favorite car was a 1959 Edsel, and when he bought it, an original tire was in the trunk. So when he came down for Thanksgiving, I said, "Could you please make sure you bring that tire?" And he goes, "Why?" So I said, "I just want to see it." So I, I he left the tire here for a year, and I made a model of it and I cast it and um, gave him back his tire and this piece the next Thanksgiving that he came down oh. it was quite heavy <laughs> that's very cool did you do a silicone mold of it yes mm -hmm. um, and then Matt made cut the cedar and uh, made the base for it he wanted it to be big enough that he could pick it up and hold it you know felt like he wasn't going to break it wow it looks like a real tire i don't know <laughs> it does yeah it really does look like a real tire and then there you can see family gathering in the background ah I was looking for your family. I was like, where? <laughs> <laughs> butterflies. There were, I thought I put a picture of him with it. You, you did. There it is. Okay. Oh, <laughs> look at that smile. <laughs> and there's Matt. On yeah, the he's very happy. Yeah. Matt, yeah. Matty Braddy. He was mm. so happy with it. That's very cool. I love <laughs> his expression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what anybody said, but I just thought it was a great photo. 
That is a great photo. Mm. On to more rejects. Why do you think this one's so a reject? Because underneath the, the um, underneath the lid, the first mm -hmm. the bottom is real thin. Um, and underneath the lid, the little part that like locks the lid onto the box, I didn't have enough glass for it. And this mm -hmm. is cut up from glass, cut up from um, the other piece, the graft, and also from the wax uh, piece of wood that I told you about that looked like a headstone, um, also mm -hmm. from that. Mm. It looks like stone. Mm -hmm. yeah, like onyx or yeah, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't like the sharp lines in the lid. I didn't I didn't like those at all. And I thought, well, I, it's because I didn't sandblast them. So I did another little box. I called it a brain box. I thought it was going to be lighter, but it also has those sharp um, lines in it. And I did sandblast it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll just have to do a reservoir on the top and, and vent it and let it drip in. Mm. Is that a pecan for the handle? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I made three of them for that piece. <laughs> oh no. So I used it for, um, so I used it as a component in the top of the lid. Mm. And so Peggy Jo, the, the lid, is that a chopped up pot mill? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I did not sandblast the edges and I thought that was the reason why I got those sharp lines. But I did another little ugly box. I called it a brain box. And um, I made sure that I um, sandblasted the, all the piece, the whole thing. And I thought that would help. And it too has sharp lines. You know, the, so only I think way, I need the only way I've been able to cure that when when the work is a little thick and you don't want those edges is to give them a fire polish. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. This has happened to me too. So you sandblast and then you fire polish, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes when with the sandblasted edge, you get an even worse um, veiling problem. <clears throat> Especially if sense. you're using um, silicon carbide. Well, mm. it's uh, um, that's a good idea. I'll cut it up and try it again. <laughs> Here for the next. It's really one. beautiful. I, I love your rejects. Thank you. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not this one though. <laughs> This is another reject mm -hmm. and it's very, very short. If I have to grind it down to take out that open part, um, it, it would be like a disc because it's not very tall. <laughs> mm. I like the colors though. The colors are nice. They look like caramel. Yeah, they mm. do. But what if you grind it slanted? you know Ooh. oh that's an idea i could do that yeah i think it would be very interesting that would be a good Put something yeah that I would mean, be a even good for save. a nice ikebana uh i i cannot pronounce it ikebana you know uh if you put mm -hmm. flowers inside and you have that comb the green combs with the needles and you stick the flowers in them mm. i don't know yeah Just... mm. i love the colors how big is this one peggy joe it's probably six or seven inches across wow oh, good size yeah it's a good size piece yeah Hmm. See. Okay, here's a little ugly brain box. 
I wasn't expecting it to be. And so I didn't finish it because I'm going to cut it up. But when I was making it out of wax, I went, dang, I said, that kind of looks like brains. So I wanted it to be um, more transparent. And I thought the glass would do it, but obviously it didn't. And there is the dark lines in the bottom of the piece. Mm -hmm. So I just sandblasted it and thought it would help and it didn't. So I'll just cut it up and fire polish it. Thank you, Kim. I know how that works out. And start, and start again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, the, the fit on it is good. It still didn't have quite enough glass in the bottom of the lid because I didn't get that key thing to hold it onto the box. But it too is a weighty piece. It's probably just under two pounds. Mm. It's very odd. It looks like stone. It is odd. Yeah. I was going for brains. <laughs> <laughs> what I had what I had did was I started on it and I went, ah, you know, this is really ugly. And I have a, a griddle that I will um, put wax on to keep it warm and soft. And so I took a putty knife and, or a sculpting knife and I kind of scraped it across there. So on the lid, you can kind of see like little ripples and stuff. And I started packing that on there and I said, oh, that's kind of cool. But um, it didn't turn out. Mm. The end. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to bore, bore, be boring to everybody. No, no, it's but I no this was quite interesting. I think Kim's got it right. I think you guys are fearless. It's like it just you try anything. It's it's um. I wish my mind worked that way. <laughs> It does. Yeah. How many people do, can do a beautiful pot de verre rubber chicken? Oh, okay. That's my, my one success. <laughs> it's because everybody else was doing florals. <laughs> I had to That's think right. different, right? You did. Uh, it's beautiful. You didn't even have any drag on that thing. Oh, my goodness. So my, my rubber chicken... Pot de verre bowl, though, it had, I guess, a core. So there was a core. So when you fired it, the core would sink mm -hmm. down and then smoosh the glass up the sides. And if you actually saw right. it in person, it didn't go down all the way. So um, one edge is thinner, the other one's thick, and it's kind of lopsided on the inside. But if you put it on a tall shelf, you never see that part of it. So, <laughs> so you'll notice it's always displayed up high. And <laughs> It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> it is beautiful. I, I, you know, I said, man, there's not any drag on that at all. <laughs> uh, Perfect. Get so, yeah. Yeah, I just, I love pot de verre. I want to do more pot de verre. So, so, um, I just Maybe bought a bunch of powders. Maybe when you get your studio set up. Yeah, I got to figure out how to get my kilns to Colorado still. But uh, anyway. There will be more pot de verre in my future. So I'm glad. I favorite. love your work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's one of my very favorite techniques. So I think because it's so there's so much precision and and you know, you can just I don't know, the the precision of, of carving and the precision of placing. And it's it, I mean, what you guys do with it is just stunning. So so oh, it's um I can't wait to see what comes next. Well, hopefully it won't be an ugly brain box. <laughs> I like the brain box. <laughs> I think it's fun. But you know, the, the stuff that doesn't turn out, the rejects, the experiments, that's how you get to the good stuff. That is true. Right. That's you know, true. You work that's through very it. Very true. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, so Kim, you got anything or? I don't have anything, but we could talk for a minute about what we're going to do in two weeks for Fusing Friday. Oh, yes. Oh, cool. Yes. So um, anyway, Kim had 
hopefully it's the right one, but uh, Kim had a suggestion. I guess there a couple of people were talking about the possibility about talking about jewelry findings. So different ways that you could set jewelry, some of the different things that are out there and available, um, you know, bezel trays, uh, you know, bales and things. I mean, everybody knows about the An Anaraku bales. That's kind of the common thing, but uh, there's a whole bunch of other options out there. So we have, um, the presentation is almost complete, I guess, but we've even found some things like, like cast glass bezels for jewelry, which I'm not sure how you would use that with wow. loose glass, but, uh, but I can imagine a beautiful dichro plate piece set in a clear glass bezel might be interesting. So, so in researching it, we found some, some interesting options. And then also talking about, I guess, different ways to set things that don't involve, you know, pre-made ones. You know, we've been admiring some of Melina's jewelry lately, for example, <laughs> and some of the ways that she's been setting, setting her pieces. So, so that's what we'll do in two weeks. And well, didn't we have another one, Kim? We were talking about one today. Let's see. Um, Hold on, looking back through our messages. Ah, oh, we had another one. Oh, uh, Kirsten has agreed to talk about working with stores and galleries at some point. We don't have a date on that yet. I'm still kind of yeah. shuffling some people around to get my calendar in order, but that will be coming up sometime. Yes. Then we're also kind of uh, been working for a long time on a presentation about studio tips, tricks, and hacks. I like that one. Oh, yeah. that'd be that'll good. Be fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. And soliciting people's ideas on that one because I know people have great ideas and things that they do. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I have to go, but thank you again. Thanks, Melina. Uh, it was nice seeing you. Nice seeing you yeah. too. And thank you so much for the presentation. It was fantastic.